Hello, my friend. This is Greg Hennett bringing you more Water from the Rock. Today's message is titled, Death or Growth by Congregation. A recent chat with a discouraged pastor reminded me of a most unpleasant fact. Churches can make or break their pastors. The church board may beat him down with ungodly behavior, unbiblical demands, and unchristlike attitudes. And if he doesn't think and react spiritually, which means scripturally, he will breathe his last in the ministry and thereafter be useless to God and helpful to no one. And why? His church has killed him. That is, slowly but surely beaten the holy excitement, living hope, joy in ministry, care for God's people, and love of serving Jesus right out of him. Now, naturally, sheep don't rise up and kill their shepherds. But I'm sad to report that ecclesiastically, spiritually, it happens all the time. A recent Barna survey stated 38% of pastors in America seriously considered quitting the ministry in 2021. On the other hand, if the pastor learns to quickly forgive his demon-like deacons and exasperating elders, he will soon discern their real inspirer and his real enemies, the rulers of the darkness of this world, Ephesians 6.12 who do Satan's bidding against all effective light-bearers, especially pastors. He then must make a pivotal decision. Let them win or do whatever it takes to defeat them. Or, in human terms, he must decide to either go or grow. That is, faithlessly flee the pastorate or faithfully remain and grow stronger by trusting and obeying his way through the conflict. If he chooses to grow instead of go, he must determine to, more than ever, seek Christ, overcome every problem by prayer, mine God's word for his riches, soak in his presence daily, listen for his messages, and deliver them faithfully to his congregation immature and carnal as they are, for Christ's sake. This will make him increasingly strong and spiritual and spiritually minded and Christ-like and full of God's overcoming love and willing and able to faithfully feed, lead, and intercede for his stubborn sheep every day, despite their troublesome butting and kicking and biting. What has happened? The pastor's love for Jesus has overcome their lack of love for him. Paul encapsulated this Christ-like pastoral love in his second letter to the Corinthians. When many Corinthian Christians were rejecting Paul's ministry due to the envy-driven slander of false apostles, Paul declared his intention to not go, but to grow. I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. 2 Corinthians 12, 15. And as embattled pastors fast and pray for their unreasonable opponents on their board or in their congregation, who fuss and fret and find fault over everything from the church's worship to its programs to the length of sermons to the lack of fun and games or even the way the pastor's wife dresses or wears her hair, some of his critics, perhaps many, will come to their senses. Suddenly, by the Holy Spirit's enlightenment, they will see how petty, how carnal, self-centered, unbiblical, and out of divine order they have been behaving and receive a fresh baptism of humility and penitence. Then they can all grow together into the likeness of the one who is coming soon for changed, not carnal, Christians, edifying, not exasperating elders, and humble, not haughty board members. Friends, it's time for self-examination. If you are one of your church's assistant pastors or worship leaders or on its staff, board of elders or deacons, or various committees, 
or just a faithful member in the congregation, an important position indeed. Ask yourself these questions. Am I a carnal complainer? Or am I a spiritually minded cooperator? Am I a troublemaker? Or am I a peacemaker? Am I speaking against my pastor? Or am I praying for my pastor? Does my behavior encourage my pastor or discourage him? Am I responding to his efforts to teach and correct me? Or am I rejecting them? Am I helping uphold my pastor in his ministry? Or am I pulling him down? The Old Testament's description of the Battle of Rephidim gives us a powerful lesson on this subject. It's recorded in Exodus 17, 8 through 16. There we find, as Joshua led Israel's armies in battle against the hateful Amalekites in the valley, Moses stood on the hill above, exerting divine authority over Israel's enemies by holding the rod of God high over his head. But as the day wore on, Moses wore down and was very nearly worn out. It was a crucial moment. The battle could have gone either way. It all depended on whether or not Moses could continue holding up that rod of God. Just then, Aaron and her, Moses' assistants, his associate pastors, deacons or elders, if you will, made a momentous decision. They chose to help their struggling, weary pastor. They provided him with a stone to sit on and personally held up his two hands while he continued holding the rod of God. Though simple and practical, their solution was powerful as it enabled Moses to continue exerting God's authority over the battle. If they had not helped him, the whole congregation of Israel would have fallen to the Amalekites. Because they upheld him instead of hindering him through neglect or opposition, Israel won, Moses won, Aaron and Hur won, and God won. Perhaps today your pastor, elders, and congregation are encamped in a Rephidim experience. The spirit of Amalek is stirring rumors, misjudgments, contention, unchristlike behavior, and bitter division. You see the trouble. You know who is causing it. You recognize their unspiritual attitudes. You know your pastor is stressed, perhaps beyond measure. And you know also what you can do to help him, whether through intercession, a kind word, or practical help, or better yet, all three. The question is, will you? Will you help your pastor go, or will you help him grow? Will you help him live on ministerially to bless many people, or slowly but surely die and disappoint Jesus? Make no mistake, as with Moses, Aaron, and Hur at Rephidim, Your pastor's failure is your failure, and his victory is your victory. So make your momentous decision now, right now while you hear my voice, and help win the day for your pastor, your congregation, yourself, and God. Well, that's all for today, my friend. For more information about my books, courses, teaching videos, and devotional messages, please visit us at greghennettministries.org. That's G-R-E-G-H-I-N-N-A-N-T ministries.org. And also at Greg Hennett on Facebook. And may Jesus richly bless you. Maranatha, he comes.